and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint the gold non-metallic metal armour for Rogal Dawn. So I was recently invited to go to the Horus Heresy event uh, by Games Workshop and before I went to that event they asked me if I would like to paint one of the Primarchs. Uh, so I picked Rogal Dawn uh, because I like to paint <laughs> non-metallic metal gold and I thought uh, this would be a perfect opportunity to really go to town on it. Uh, so you can see on the video that there's already a, a layer of brown on the model. So it was prime black, uh, and then I used an airbrush to very quickly uh, spray over some Mornfang brown on it. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, and, it, and that's the only airbrush that I've used on the video, uh, by the way, but um, if you don't have an airbrush, then you could very easily just use a large brush uh, with a, a thin layer of paint and go over it in the same way, uh, or you could stipple it on with a large brush, or, or it, even if you don't want to uh, apply it at all, you can just start from a black primer uh, and start painting on the uh, non-metallic effect as well. And you will get a very similar result. It, it won't be quite as rich, but it will be a higher contrast. So it will kind of show the uh, the bright highlights to be even brighter and shinier. It just won't have like sort of the, the richy color in the shadows. To start with, uh, I'm using uh, XV88. And this is the main color for blocking in all of the reflections. It will take a while. One of the things with the Rogal Dawn armor is that it's very, very detailed. Uh, I think you can see that on the video quite clearly. It's covered in filigree. Every armor panel has details uh, just everywhere. Now, that looks great, and by the time you finish, the model will look fantastic because of all these details. However, during the painting process, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, what you'll find is that it obviously it, you know, blocks your brush as you're trying to do long strokes. There are no kind of like big open areas on the model free of detail, so you can't do long, smooth strokes and get a, a very clean brush mark. Uh, but what you do have to do when painting all these reflections and things in is kind of try and ignore the detail. Uh, one fault, or not necessarily a fault, but one problem I see sometimes when people uh, try to paint non metallics is that they start picking out all the detail straight away, uh, you know, leaving all the recesses, picking out the, the raised areas. And, uh, you know, light doesn't really work like that. Uh, I'm going to try and show you. As the video goes on, like how the uh, the light, how to make the light look more interesting and realistic, um, and one of the things that you should be able to see here is that, as I mentioned, I'm ignoring the detail, just painting straight over it, so the paint will go into the recesses. Now, for a start off, it's going to look really, really messy when you're doing this, and you might think, oh, I'm doing this wrong. It doesn't look very good. It doesn't look anything like metal. Uh, but you just have to keep on going. The trouble with Rogal Dawn is the, there's a lot of this that you've got to do. So until you get to the uh, kind of like the the mid to end stages when you start adding the highlights and you actually see the results that you get, you know, that you're looking for, um, it's a long way to go before you actually know that you're doing it correct or not. Uh, but the, the you know to you don't have to worry too much. Uh, I think as well. Um, you don't have to be super neat at this stage. I mean, you can tell like the the highlights have blocked in already. They're not neat. They're you know they're just very rough. You're going to be doing lots of layering on this. Um, the, it's not going to be a massive amount of blending actually either. Uh, one thing that people uh, you know stress about with uh, painting the metallics is you know getting really smooth, even transitions all over. To make it look metallic, you don't need to do that. Like if you're doing it for a competition piece, and maybe you you know go to spend a long time making every transition perfect or whatever. But you know if you just want something nice for display, or you know like a, spend a bit of time on a you know an important model for your army, you don't need to get the blending perfect. As long as you get the light volumes, like the size and position of the highlights correct, it'll still look like it's a, a metallic finish on it. Of course, you could just you know spray the whole model gold uh, but you know you'll get a very different result if you do that um, and this kind of you know painting non metallics it's a very rewarding thing when you get it right it, it's very uh, satisfying to think you know oh I've painted that uh, to, you know to make it look it that way and you have complete control over where the highlights and shadows go whereas you know if you're using metallic paints uh, it'll look very shiny because you're using metallic paints but what, depending on how you hold the model, where the light catches it, and things like that, is you know that has complete control and 
over how the model looks. So, it, you know, if the light's coming from one direction, doesn't matter how you've highlighted it and shaded it with metallic paints, the, the shine will come from whichever direction the light comes from. Whereas when you paint it like this, you've set that light on it. It's like a moment frozen in time. So it doesn't, the light doesn't rotate, obviously, as you move, you know, turn the model around. Um, it's always in whatever kind of like lighting situation you've painted. So very dramatic lighting will always stay as very dramatic lighting. It's never going to be a case of, oh, the, the light's coming from the other direction than I intended. Uh, so now all the things that I painted for shadows with the metallic paint are now being really shiny. Uh, you know, so there's always pros and cons to uh, different types of painting, uh, but for this, especially because he's such an important character, uh, I thought it, it would be more fun, and um, it, it is more fun for me anyway, just to paint non metallics. But um, yeah, I, it's uh, it, it's not for everyone, but uh, if you enjoy painting and you just like you know <laughs> want to spend a bit of time having some fun practicing out uh, non metallics, then it's a fantastic model for it. Uh, apart from obviously the massive amount of detail so you know if, if you haven't done non-metallics before then it's probably not the best model to go for uh, you know something with like a cleaner smoother surfaces and a little bit smaller uh, remember this is quite a large model you know the Primark models are you know they're huge compared to normal space marines uh, so like two or three times as tall uh, depending on <laughs> which space marine like if it's a uh, you know one of the uh, Horus Heresy models, like a normal space mean, I think it's probably like maybe two and a half times as tall as that. So there's a lot of surface area to cover. Uh, so I've already told you right, the first um, highlight color was done with XV88. Uh, all the colors I'm using for this are Games Workshop colors apart from the white. Uh, my preference for white, if you've seen any of my other videos, it's always the same one. I use uh, P3 Morrow White. You don't have to use P3 Morrow White if you don't have it or you don't like it, you know, whatever reason. You can use uh, whatever white you want. You'll get very similar results. Just be aware that certain types of uh, paint from different brands and things have different uh, levels of finish. So in terms of the, uh, the shininess, like if they're matte or, you know, shiny satin finishes, things like that. Games Workshop paints tend to have a slightly satin finish. Uh, and the uh, P3 Moral White is closer to that uh, kind of thing. So it's not going to be a case of I've used a very matte white paint uh, along with the, you know, the Games Workshop paint. So you get like a, <laughs> that in that case, you would have more satin shadows and matte highlights. And that's kind of like a, a bit of a weird combination. Of course, you can always fix that as well with uh, varnishes at the end. So, you know, it's, it's never really the end of the world with whatever, uh, paint brand you use and you can always you know change the finish at the end if you want but um you know it's it's all uh, preference really uh, so the second highlight or yeah the second uh, hand painted on highlight so remember the model started off with a, a layer of mornfang brown then the first highlight was xv88 and now i'm using baylor brown baylor brown is going to be where you get all this sort of the yellow color on the model from uh, it's really nice. It has pretty good opacity as well. By opacity, I mean it. It's a very solid color. Uh, you know, some colors when you paint paint them on, you can see through them very easily. That's the translucency, uh, and in some cases, that's uh, useful because you know, especially for transitions and things, you want to do multiple layers with transitions. So you, as you add up the layers, you can see through to the paint layer below. Uh, and you get some nice effects and things doing that. But other times, uh, like a stronger opacity is, well, it can speed things up a lot. You can get a strong layer of paint on there uh, quickly without having to do multiple layers. So in terms of that, Baylor Brown is quite nice. It does, you know, it has a good finish and you can very quickly build up the uh, the opacity of the, the color. Uh, and that's really useful for this for the uh, the non-metallics because it'll speed up the process. Uh, you don't you don't need to spend a long time. I, I mentioned this before. You don't need to spend a long time blending all the colors, but you do need to get the the light volumes, the size of the highlights on the armor, uh, in the right places. And uh, one little trick that I do um, just to help with the blending effect. So it's not going to work really close up. Uh, you know, if you're looking at this under a magnifying glass. 
but you know if you're looking at it you know a, a foot or two away uh, it'll work really nicely so you can see as i'm applying the uh, the baler brown there at the uh, kind of like the edges i do like little tiny marks it's it looks a little bit like stippling or sort of like feathering effects it's basically just a broken line you know just lots of little vertical lines or horizontal depending on which direction the uh you know that you want the highlight to go but it means that it's not a very hard edge to the highlight so you can see here i'm going over it and it's all lots of little vertical lines next to each other so where you know it just leaves at the very edge to the transition to the uh, xv88 below uh, it's it's not a, a very hard line in between them uh, and that kind of like it helps the effect of it looking metallic so kind of like a sort of a polished metal look to it uh, you probably will have to go over each highlight uh, one or two times just to build up the opacity still because even though it has good opacity like there's not many paints where you can just do one coat and that's it job done you get a completely 100 percent opaque finish um but you know the Baylor brown is as i said it, it is pretty good in that regard is that you don't need too many um, some of the blues in particular they're like if you're using uh, or like the layer paints as well they're they're much thinner so you probably need like four or five layers to achieve the same effect uh, the I mean even though I said that it isn't completely opaque so you need one or two layers you can still help with the transitions uh, as you go over the for this like second and third layers uh, and you can kind of see it a little bit on the wrist guard there so towards the wrist at you know the front near the hand it's a little bit darker there and as it goes further back towards the elbow that pl uh, plate I've done uh, more layers of paint towards the elbow area and that looks brighter because the uh, the extra paint has made it more opaque there so even though it's you know still quite rough at this stage and there's only two paints been used as highlight colors uh, there's still some transition in there uh, the uh, like all the filigree and details on the model uh, they are going to get away in the way of all of this painting it, it does it will slow down the process so for a start off when i mentioned it so you, you're painting it over these details and that will look messy as well uh, but as you progress through the highlight layers you will start to need to pick out the, the details as well and it's kind of like you have to use your best judgment on whether you need to just go over the whole area and get paint within the recesses or if you want to pick out the details and make them stand out a bit more one nice thing that you can do is to extend some of the details uh, like extend the highlights on them so you can see the filigree on the wrist guard again there it goes all the way through the dark line now you can actually like extend the highlights so it goes over the dark line um so you know the the dark reflection you know through the middle of the wrist guard uh, is not as strong where it touches the filigree uh, and that will kind of like represent the the light catching some of the curve and the raised surface a bit more it, sometimes it's not always 100 percent realistic with how you do it but what you'll find is even if it's not realistic it'll make it look better uh, because it, the detail will then stand out and if you get the contrast high enough it'll still trick your eyes into thinking that it's sort of like a metallic shiny surface as long as enough of the model looks realistic then you kind of like your your brain will give you a pass on the bits that aren't quite as um, uh, realistic um, because also remember that in a realistic setting there's light sources and bounce lights and reflections and things coming from everywhere uh, it's not just like the sun uh, you will have like reflections of like dark objects and light objects and things and they can be anything you can have like a plane flying over expl explosions to the left and right view all sorts of things like that so you can put like random light sources and reflections all over as long as you get the primary light source which would be generally the sun uh, then you know you can fill in all the other details with whatever sort of reflections you want and it'll still look correct the the light hitting the chest here this is one of the the more tricky areas on the model uh, you can see as i'm applying the uh, the bale of brown here uh, the the raised details they, they really get in the way on the chest but the nice thing on the chest 
is that uh, there's a cast shadow. Now I don't actually spend too much time painting the cast shadows. I kind of just leave them and I paint um, around where the shadow is. It's the same effect. Like I mean, if you find that you've painted somewhere and then you think actually I want to cast shadow there, just use some Rhinox hide, uh, which will be very close. Uh, you know, the, the, so you might be, why don't you use Mornfang Brown? Uh, because the Mornfang Brown that was applied with the airbrush or whatever way you've decided to uh, put it on you know with the stippling or dry brushing or whatever uh, it's as I was talking about before the uh, translucency of the paint so the Mornfang brown on top of the black leaves a darker color like I haven't done lots and lots of layers of Mornfang brown to create a 100% um, fully opaque Mornfang brown there's uh, you know it's basically showing the black underneath um, so that gives a darker finish to it hopefully that makes sense but so it's not just like a, a fully opaque Mornfang Brown, it's a really dark Mornfang Brown, and the closest to that, you know, is Rhinox Hide. So if you paint on the shadow using Rhinox Hide, that will blend in very well with the base color. Um, it, like, it might be a little bit darker, or you know, some you know, it's, it, you're never going to get it 100 perfect all the time. But because of all the layers of paint and things anyway, and you know, you can tweak it with glazes and things as you go along, then uh, you'll get something that looks close enough and with all the tweaking that goes into this kind of painting uh, it'll all you know match up pretty well at the end uh, you can see here the uh, so the high uh, for this kind of painting I wanted to have quite a dramatic look to the model uh, to help me with that I looked at like you know pictures of Rogel Dawn in artwork settings so not other painted models of him uh, although those are also good reference but you know, looking at things like you know codex covers, or I mean, he's probably not on many codex covers, but um, like you know, if you can find uh, artwork of him, then uh, you know you see how other artists have painted, like from a two D setting, like the very dramatic shiny armor with how the light hits him, and so that's kind of like what I wanted to capture with this, and to do something like that you really have to work on your focal points so in terms of brightness on this his shoulders which, I mean they're massive anyway the big shoulder pads and then uh, to go along with that you want the, the light to catch the chest uh, head as well although I'm not covering the head in this video but the you know chest shoulders head the and also which will be the eagle behind him as well these are the, the main focal points on the model so those need more attention and they need to be really bright and because of that really brightness, it also means that any shadows that you want to paint on uh, will be quite strong and defined. Um, but that in, you know, that also helps the brightness because you get like super high contrast. You know, having dark next to light always makes the light look stronger, and vice versa makes the dark look darker. Uh, the the paint consistency that I'm using here is a little bit thinner. Uh, so I say around about 50 50 water to paint sometimes you know it gets a little bit more sometimes a little bit less it doesn't yeah you know, it doesn't have to be perfect but you do want the paint to flow remember that you're going to be doing lots and lots of layers here and you know if you have the paint a bit too thick uh, when you add these layers up then you're going to get a kind of uh, like a, a textured finish almost to the armor and you know bearing in mind this is a resin model so it's, it's not like a perfectly smooth you know uh, finish on a model like a plastic like plastic models are fantastic I mean kind of like <laughs> I mean I was sort of hoping it would have been a, like when I was offered a, a Primark to paint I was like oh is it a plastic Primark but um, no it's a, it's a resin one now obviously the benefit of resin is it's very highly you, know, you can do some really great details and things like that you know super uh, control details but it does mean that you don't have the same like um, you know machine finished perfect print each time uh, you know uh, a resin model is a little bit more uh, work and you know so you, you just don't get that perfectly kind of like smooth finish all the time like you, you would with a, a plastic model and uh, you know that coupled with the uh, you know, if you have too thick a paint layering up all the time, you might end up with something that 
it, you know doesn't look as smooth as you want it to and the other problem with this is especially with non-metallics you know painting this sort of style as you go up to brighter colors uh, you start adding white to the paint white is always a problem it doesn't matter which white you use you know people always tell me you know try white ink or whatever it doesn't matter they you know it's going to create like if you're not careful and you have the paint too thick it's going to create more of a sort of a chalky finish so try and make sure that the uh the paint isn't too thick i mean you'll know pretty soon if you have or not it's not the end of the world if it does get a little bit too thick you can fix a lot of uh paint inconsistency with glazes uh also <laughs> just as a side note you can see on the video my wet palette in the top left there uh, is out of sync with the main video that so it's only for a short time if that bothers you just <laughs> just ignore the wet palette but um the, the rest of the video will be in sync it's just for some reason i don't know why uh, I, I managed to catch it out of sync from some of the recording i probably uh forgot to record with one of the cameras at one point and then it sort of missed a bit of time but uh, anyway regardless the colors on the wet palette uh, are all accurate and they will you know they, they're kind of important now so you can see there's a lot more of them uh, before i was just using the xv88 which is in the top right and then below that the Baylor brown now in other videos and things uh where i've done uh, non-metallics before i've used lots of different colors for for highlights in this case all i've done is taken Baylor brown and added white to it each time so at the bottom right that's Baylor brown with a small amount of white to the left of that Baylor Brown with a it's kind of like 50 50 uh, amount of white and then to the left of that it's mainly white with a small amount of Baylor Brown obviously above that is white uh, in the middle of the wet palette is uh, Mornfang Brown and then above that is Rhinox Hyde now I put the, uh, the Mornfang Brown and Rhinox Hyde on there uh, to uh, well, one the Ronix hide, as I mentioned, is really handy for any of the shadows. So if I have not done a neat job in leaving areas, then I can just go with the Ronix hide and just tidy them up and make them uh, super clean and sharp. And the Mornfang brown, that's quite an important colour, but it's not used too much. Uh, but it will help really strongly, and I'll, I'll wait until I probably get to that stage to uh, to like explain it a bit more but it will help with the transitions uh, cleaning everything up giving everything a, like a richer color because what's happening is as you go through the highlights uh, so as i mentioned each different uh, highlight stage is adding a bit more white uh, by doing that you're taking away the yellow you desaturating it and if you you know get to the end of all the highlights what you'll probably find is that the gold looks really really pale uh, which I mean that's also a perfectly uh, valid way of painting gold you know there's lots of variations of gold depending on you know what sort of you know they have mixes of gold uh, also it depends on the uh, the lighting also the armor might not be gold it might be like polished um, brass or whatever you know it could be just some futuristic uh, special metal it's very unlikely he's actually using gold on his armor so you know uh, the the actual colors there's you you have a lot of range of what you want to you know it's just gold in color but it could be any kind of material and gold is not a very specific color because again like it depends on the lighting uh, atmosphere that you're adding so it could be like in a warm environment or a cool environment this will all change how the gold looks uh, you know so whatever kind of like look you want that's fine but in if you want a sort of a richer warmer gold what you'll find is as you keep adding more and more white to the highlights uh, you're not balancing it out it, like you're you your the percentage of white compared to yellow increases so there's technically less yellow and that then means that you've taken away the yellow from the model that's the visible amount of yellow because as you layer the different highlights up then the yellow that w was visible to start with from the Baylor brown uh, becomes less visible because there's more white layered on top of it and then there's just not really any yellow left on the model now uh, there are two ways to combat this there's glazing in some well, i mean there's more than two but for, for how i'm painting it there's going to be two there's glazing in bale or brown at the transitions which i will be doing and there's glazing in mornfang brown 
from the transitions from the kind of like the midtones into the shadows. Uh, both of these two things, uh, you don't have to glaze them. You can do uh, thicker. You can take the paint straight off the the wet palette if you want. As it is, uh, you just won't get a smooth a smooth a finish, but it will still work. Um, but both of these things will add richness and color back onto the model while also keeping the highlights. Uh, I think you can kind of like see on the video now the like the the painting on the glove, well like the hand and the arm, uh, how much brighter and high contrast it now looks in comparison to all the other parts on the model. Now, uh, so I mean, if you're bored of the video by this stage, then. I mean, you've pretty much seen a good majority of everything you need to know for how to paint the, the non-metallics. Uh, so part of the problem is with a model, model this big and this amount of uh, non-metallics is that you're doing the same thing over and over. Uh, you know, this you're not changing color too much. Uh, you're not having to make many tricky decisions in terms of, you know, what a color theory, theory or anything like that. You're just stuck with a, a non-metallic metal golden model. However, there are kind of like interesting decisions in terms of light placement, you know, shadow placement uh, and focal points, uh, you know, and that's kind of like what makes it more interesting as well as picking out uh, certain details or like having large blocks of uh, plain uh, area as well. Uh, one of the really nice parts on this with the shoulder pad here, so you've got the kind of like little lightning bolt there. That's like one of the larger areas of bright highlight uh, on the model that doesn't have a lot of detail on it. Now I know that I mean, it's still a little bit detailed there and there's obviously filigree in the corner right next to it, but it is like one of the larger parts on the model that is going to be highlighted really brightly uh, without having to worry too much about painting around lots of details. And that works so, so nicely in terms of drawing your attention to that part of the model. Uh, it, it is definitely worth spending so there's a little time skip there. Uh, you might notice, notice as well that I keep taking his head on, uh, putting his head on, taking it off. Uh, I put the head on just to help me kind of, kind of like balance the uh, the brightness of the highlights and things. Uh, so the head is just kind of sprayed Cadian flesh tone. Uh, you know, very quickly. Again, you don't have to use an airbrush. Just put layers of paint on until we get like a nice finish. Uh, but it just helps me in terms of you know the like balancing the colors and things does it look like it you know it fits well the the non-metallic the brightness and the colors of the non-metallics next to the skin uh, but you know because i have to paint the head as well and spend a bit of time on it then the head will be then taken off and then i can paint that separately uh, although i would caution you with uh, painting things separately there's always a danger uh, that you'll get the lighting wrong and it won't match when you put the model back on. Uh, so, if you are going to paint something separately, like the head, um, you know, every now and then take it off your little painting stand, uh, whatever it is you're using, and then pop it back on the model just to make sure that the way the direction you're going with the painting still matches up in terms of highlights and shadows and color balance, things like that. Uh, so, it is usually the best thing uh, to paint as much of the model together as you can. Uh, it will quite often mean that you can't get your paintbrush into a lot of the details uh, so if you, <laughs> some people just use very tiny amounts of super glue just to tack bits on and then they can then break them off afterwards uh, it's always a problem if there's like two parts to a model that need gluing in and fit the gap filling uh, but like if that you know when you do that then you you need to paint underneath something that's always a like a big problem but it's always better uh, to fill and sand and get a perfect finish and then you just struggle to paint around the details that you can't quite reach than it is to paint everything beautifully and then stick it together and then be like oh now I've got a horrible line really visible on the surface uh, so I mean I, I think by now you've got a pretty good idea of uh, the uh, the techniques that I'm using we're only about halfway through the video um, I did think it'd be kind of useful if I can show you on different parts of the model, some of the uh, the different highlights um, in terms of like the shape uh, of the highlights as well. And like some can be a little bit more difficult uh, and also not having every highlight as bright as you know the main highlights hitting the model, like the focal point highlights. So I've mentioned about the chest and the shoulder, 
you know they need to be really bright and strong uh, like in a nice big uh, nice good size you do not want every part of the model highlighted up like this you know so with the same uh, amount of highlight compared to shadows uh, oh and one little tip as well uh, so when I was building this model the pommel on the sword and like the or not the whole sword basically but like the uh, the way his hands go is very dependent on holding the sword so I you can't actually see it but the the pommel of the sword and the handle of the sword is actually glued in there into his hands and then I cut the uh, the handle off just before it touches the hilt uh, so it's not the uh, the, like the, the model isn't the same as it so I built it <laughs> to be different to how the model comes like you can leave the sword off when you uh, glue it all together but the chances are that the um, the sword position won't be quite right when you try and get it into his hands like that his fingers sort of wrap around the pommel uh, so it's quite kind of important that it looks just right when you you know you get that build in there um, so I thought it would be easier to actually build it with the sword so it's all glued together then I cut it off uh, so I can actually then paint underneath you know so he's got like his stomach area and you know, legs and things the sword gets in the way of all of that uh, so I was talking about you know the, the light placement and the brightness of the highlights. You can see quite clearly now how big and bold the highlights are on the chest and shoulder. And you'll see they become even more so as I keep layering up these highlights. Uh, and you can also see where I've left off the nice little sort of corner shape. Uh, if you look uh, between the chest and the shoulder pad, there's a shadow in there. Uh, it's not very neat. I will at some point go in with the uh, the Rhinox hide and Monfang Brown and just tidy that up, make it a bit neater. Uh, but the more of the highlights that, that I add on, so going all the way up to pure white, that will, you know, it makes it, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it makes it high contrast. So you know the shadow becomes much more visible. Also, I mentioned earlier about adding a bit of warmth and color back in. Uh, so here I've used Baylor Brown. Uh, it's a little bit fuzzy in the background, but this I've turned this into a glaze. Uh, now, by a glaze, all I mean is that I've added water to the paint and made it. It looked like a wash. So you could use this as a as a wash as well, but we don't want that. Uh, so all the glazes is it's around about five parts water to one part paint. Uh, like you can have differing amounts of water and paint for the ratio. So the more paint that you add. The obviously the thicker it's going to be, uh, whereas, but that also means that it's going to leave a harder mark. Uh, so you want it quite runny. So you want the consistency to be like water, uh, and as I mentioned, around about five parts water to one part paint. And you dip your brush into that mixture, then rub it on some kitchen roll. So there's hardly any left. You know, rub it along, get it into a nice sharp point, and then you're just kind of using it to very carefully blend between the transitions so you've got like the bright highlight then you've got your sort of your, your mid-tone area and then the shadows and you're you want to transition like put some a little bit of that uh, Baylor Brown just between the bright highlight and the mid-tone and that will then add like the yellow sort of glow to the edges and it will also make the transitions better uh, because they're, they're softer because even though the the very thin glaze that you're applying it doesn't it's not opaque so it's not covering the area completely it is softening it uh, like if you kept just doing layer over layer probably you know like a hundred layers or something you would still get an opaque finish but obviously you don't want the, the opaque finish but you do want cer a certain amount of translucency there um, because as I said it softens the the transition so you know it just looks like it's better blend well it is better blended <laughs> so you, you, know, you get like a, a nice finish and the amount of time that you want to spend doing these tiny little glazes and things uh, will be determined by if you want to do this for a competition or you know how how good you want the painting to be uh, people often make the mistake when they're trying to paint non-metallics and they do the transition and it goes from like almost white or probably straight up to white all the way to black in the shadows and they'll do an even transition going all the way and so you'll have like the white the brown you know the darker brown the black like in a perfectly even transition all the way along and it won't look non-metallic 
but it you know can be a perfect transition going you know very very smoothly all the way uh, and it just won't look metallic and the reason for that is the the size of the highlight so i talked you know i've already mentioned all this like the the size that you know the big bright blocks of highlight those need to stay you're only blending on the transition points between the two so where the highlight goes into the midtones or where the midtones goes into the shadows uh, what you'll find is generally the shadows are a little bit easier like the darker paint has smaller pigment particles so they're a little bit easier to blend uh, but you know even then so you get some mournfang brown and you glaze it between like the mid-tones into the shadows you know a little glaze doing the same thing fill your water, um, well up around about four or five parts water to one part paint uh, although mournfang brown is a little bit uh, more translucent so you might not to th need to thin it quite as much um, but, and you know also Rhinox Hide if there's a, a strong line you'll probably find that you don't need to use the Rhinox Hide but if you just need areas a little bit darker because you've glazed a bit too much Mornfang Brown on then you you know go for the Rhinox Hide glaze a little bit of that into the shadows as well just to uh, keep up the uh, the high contrast uh, I think you can see that best actually on uh, the top left leg so I didn't actually show too much of that because it was actually quite quick to do and I didn't realize uh, how much of it I'd done uh, until I uh, realized that I hadn't recorded it but <laughs> the uh, you can see it it looks quite smooth it, you can see the cast shadow under his little hip plate uh, which looks really nice and again that was just left off I didn't do any of the painting on that and then uh, just a very quick transition with the highlight colors uh, and they only go up towards you know the top of the, the hip or like sort of pelvis area and then below that it's just Mornfang brown very quickly glazed into the shadows and it gives a very very smooth finish and it took hardly any time at all and because that's such a big smooth area it's very easy to get those glazes on and get a very nice clean finish there's no detail getting in the way uh, so that is you know it's a lovely part of the model having the thighs be smooth rather than having all this filigree everywhere uh, but there is one benefit to filigree uh, and that's and you're going to see that here on the, uh, the sort of the shin armor is it's very easy to do high contrast detail that will look metallic and so you can see he's got like these little circle bits with the dots in the middle all sorts of sorts of filigree uh, going all around them with curves now curves are perfect for doing non-metallics on they uh, you know because they're um, because they're curved they will catch the, the light nicely so you can you know paint a, a section of those just highlight it up very quickly with a white dot on at the like the, the top of the curve and it will just pop out very uh, you know very strongly so all this filigree will I mean I'm mean, trying to explain it there terribly but if you look on his his right our left the leg that's just behind the wet palette there you can see what I mean like all those little details very quick and simple to do but it makes it look metallic because of the high contrast it's just picking out the details uh, so you don't have to spend any time really blending whereas on this bit of of the shin here the uh, this is quite an awkward bit so it's a very strong curve as well uh, so you do have to spend a little bit of time getting you know trying to figure out the size and shape of the uh, the highlight here now you know hold the model under a lamp to give you a rough idea like if you copy the the look of that highlight you can't go too far wrong just remember that uh, when you're copying that uh, what your the light reference that you're using is of light hitting a painted surface a painted surface is not how gold reacts uh, or whatever metallic surface uh, but it's not going to be a million miles different uh, so if you know you copy it you're going to get like a shiny look to it but you know if you copy that then if you look for a little bit of reference of what gold looks like uh, then you've got enough information that you can kind of like work between the two uh, you know to make something that looks gold when you paint it the actual the hardest part on this model to paint is also the least important and that's the feet uh, the the feet are hard because they're just flat surfaces uh, flat surfaces are always a pain when painting painting non metallics they th because there's no curve on them there's it's very hard to um, create any kind of sort of transition or nice reflection uh, because there's no reference like if you just hold the flat surface under the lamp you're just going to get 
like a, a flat shine and now the thing is if it's a metallic like in reality if you have a flat surface you can tell it's metallic because as you move around the reflection moves on the flat surface so you can see the reflection with the light bouncing off of it when you're painting a flat surface uh, that's supposed to be metallic you know, to represent it it's obviously not going to move when you rotate it so there's no way to make it look metallic really uh, I mean you can do all sorts of fancy things like just paint random reflections in there but there's no way to make it uh, like to get the nice curved look uh, you know with as I was mentioning on the filigree and things you know you don't have those luxuries of these high contrast shine spots or little curves and things any sort of curve uh, is very easy to get that those light sort of light bounces and things all over them um, if you go and look like look at three-dimensional renders just look at how light hits curved surfaces or you know just go and look at cars outside it's really you know you get you know they're not necessarily metallic um, bodies on the cars but you can see the shine how it goes over all the curved surfaces whereas if you get the flat surface it's and then you know you're trying to replicate that when you paint a flat surface it's just a flat color or like a transition color there's there's not a lot there uh, so, and that's why the feet are hard it's not in terms of any particular um, painting skill um, like you know applying the brush differently it's all you know all the same sort of skill level in, in that regard in fact it's easier <laughs> for painting the flat surface because you just have to paint a flat surface um, but the only way to make the, the feet look metallic from that is one the edges uh, they will you know catch the the light a little bit stronger uh, and the other thing is to rely on the areas around them so because the shins look very metallic uh, well at least hopefully <laughs> they do um, I think it looks alright based on how it looks there in the video um, the one that's painted not the one that I'm working on <laughs> then um, that then by uh, you know because the foot is right next to it uh, well then your brain thinks oh so it's all metallic it's supposed to be the same thing so again you kind of like get a pass uh, whereas if you just cropped out all the other parts of the model and just looked at the foot it's just going to look rubbish but because the foot is, a, is you know part of the whole thing uh, it, it all works together uh, and that's actually kind of, kind of one of the important parts of painting non-metallics uh, you know with this uh, very strong directional lighting the overall model you have to look at the overall model as a whole it's not breaking it down into little parts here and there and trying to make each part look a specific way because uh, light doesn't work like that even in reality if you go and find a metallic object and you just look at it from one direction uh, from certain angles it might not catch any reflections or anything in, and you know you can't tell it's metallic until you move and see the rough light bounce off of it uh, it's especially true for things that aren't uh, don't have a mirror finish so I'm not painting this as a mirror finish it's not you know got very hard sharp reflections in it, it has lots of uh, you know, like they're softer softer reflections so it, like I said it's more like a like a, a sort of a, a like it, a softened burnished kind of like if you polished it with steel wool or something like that you know it's not gonna uh, have a, a very sharp mirror reflection and you won't see your face in this you'll just see like a blurry shape uh, and that is th that affects the the whole of the reflection of every re reflective element on the surface it's not just a case of you can't see your face you can't see any definition at all uh, everything is blurry including the light reflections uh, because they're all light reflections <laughs> um, here you can see a little bit more what I was talking about uh, just to get back to the actual painting the, uh, the transitions so I was adding the Mournfang Brown and the Rhinox Hyde in there uh, now these are both as I mentioned that they're, they're a little bit more translucent uh, and also because of, you know the smaller pigment particles and things they uh, it's a bit easier to them to not have to turn those into glazes you can probably get away with just doing taking a small amount of paint from the wet palette uh, just be careful when you do it though because it might still be a little bit opaque uh, and when you apply the Mornfang Brown start at the very edge 
of the highlighted area and then just drag it into the shadows and with you know delicate you know a really delicate touch try and follow the direction of the highlight you know always go from the highlight to the shadows if you're painting in a shadow kind of area transition uh, and the opposite is true if you're painting a highlight I always start from like the kind of before the highlight move the brush towards the brightest part that's because whichever direction you go wherever you take the brush off it leaves a slightly larger deposit of paint uh, so if you say you were trying to paint shadows and you painted from the darkest shadow uh, you know, to cover the transition to the highlight and then you take your paintbrush off after you've gone over the transition part it'll leave a little blob <laughs> and then that little blob is stronger than the uh, the other uh, area you know than the other line of the the mark that you've just made and it'll stand out really badly against the bright highlight uh, you know it just won't work as a transition whereas if you go the other way around and you start near the highlight and then you go back into the shadows uh, where you take the paint off you'll get a little blob in the shadow and that's made the shadow darker uh, and again same for the highlights like if you're painting up towards the highlight point where you take the, the paint off then you've increased the opacity like if it's just you know, multiple layers of the same color going over every time you stop towards the brightest part where you take the paintbrush off that's leaving a slightly stronger like bigger blob of paint wherever you take the paintbrush off that's increasing the opacity more at the brightest point so even just by using one color you are creating a transition because the earlier part of the the brush stroke is leaving less paint than the final part so the final area is more opaque whereas the further back you go it's less opaque so you get more of the the paint showing through Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> you know, just uh, waffled on for a bit there. Um, you can see the model's taking shape. Now, there's obviously lots of time skips in this. It took me uh, around two weeks to paint the whole model. So I, I couldn't show every part of it. I've tried to um, capture a good amount of, of the non-metallics, but it's, uh, it's tricky when you're painting a model like this where everything is kind of the same with just like slight variations depending on where the, the highlights are and the shape of the armor and things like that. Uh, I mean, if anyone has any questions of areas that I've painted and you can't figure out what I've done, um, if you leave questions uh, in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them. Uh, I will be doing uh, for my uh, Patreon and website uh, PDF for this as well so uh, that I'll try and cover everything that I can think of that uh, you might uh, need uh, in terms of you know pre covering pretty much just everything I've said but it'll be written down so easier to reference uh, here you can see the uh, the final highlights it might be a case of when you're trying to paint some of these highlights on and you do want to smooth the finish, especially if it's a larger area or you know just want to spend a bit of time being neat, that you want to water your paint down a little bit more. So most of the paint that I've used here is around about 50-50. But now for these bits, I think you can kind of see as I'm applying the paint that uh, the paint's are a bit thinner now. Um, and it's just because I wanted to get like a smoother finish. It takes longer. Uh, you have to be very careful with all the detail as well because uh, if you catch any recess the paint will run into it that you know with the more wet the paint is the more likely the capillary action of the you know the the water will just run into you know, and drag all the uh, the paint through these details uh, which is a pain but if you quick you can soak that up with a brush again and take it away uh, but yeah having the, the thinner paint you, you have to do multiple layers but you will get a smoother finish uh, as long as you keep focused, you know, always acknowledge that you want uh, the the bright blocks of highlight. It doesn't matter too much how thick the paint is. Like having the thicker paint to start with will uh, speed up the process. Uh, but if you want like a very smooth finish, then uh, a thinner process, uh, a thinner paint, you know, it takes longer, but you get uh, a nicer finish. And the reason for that is, uh, so you get the, the the chunk, the thicker paint, uh, it will leave elements of brush marks in it. The thinner paint doesn't; it self levels. Uh, you can fix some of the thicker paint with thin glazes over the top. So if you've gone a bit, you know, a bit crazy with the uh, 
the thickness of the paint just because you didn't want to spend forever painting it and now you're not happy with um, how smooth the surface is. If you start using glazes on top of that, it still has that self-leveling effect and the glazes will then settle more kind of like in between the, um, the larger blobs of paint pigment and it does kind of smooth it out. So if you ever find, like it's not as, it's never going to be as good as if you just did every layer of paint really thin, but it can fix it uh, to, to be a lot better. And also at the end, if you want to cover the whole model in say like a matte varnish or any kind of varnish, but like if you put a gloss varnish onto a non-metallic metal model, then <laughs> you will, uh, uh, you just get reflections all over the place, shine all over the place that don't match the uh, the painting that you've done. So I strongly recommend that you don't use gloss on a non-metallic metal surface uh, effect that you've painted. But a, a matte varnish, it does the same thing. It kind of like, uh, I mean, it, it's still, so a matte varnish doesn't have as like flawless a finish as a gloss varnish. And that that's to do with the diffusion of the light hitting it. You know, a, a, a matte varnish has, um, like a slightly broken surface, so it diffuses the light, so you don't get the shine reflection. And but because you cover that all over the model, it evens out the finish of the surface all over. Uh, so that can also hide, like if you've got slightly chunky paint, uh, it will you know just even it all out and, and do a, a nice finish of it. And also, as I uh, mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, the you know, having using different types of paints. Some paints have a matte finish, some have a satin finish, some have a gloss finish. Uh, if you want the uh, paint to all have the same finish, then you give it a uh, a matte varnish at the end, and it just evens everything out. Just be aware that if you've painted with a gloss paint, say a red, and then you give it a matte varnish, like a very heavy matte varnish, it will change the color. It well, it won't change the color, but it will change the way the light hits it and it'll look kind of more pinky or faded. Uh, so people sometimes get a bit, uh, you know, shocked by this. Like if they've airbrushed a red tank, say like a big, nice uh, Blood Angel tank, and then uh, it's like a nice, rich, deep, glossy red, but they go, oh, it's a bit shiny. I want it to be matte. Then you put like a vat, uh, like a matte varnish over the top. It's not glossy red anymore. It doesn't have that deep, you know, deep color to it. So, you know, just be aware of all these things. Um, it is more of a thing for a display model to have the, the nice sort of um, matte varnish finish all over. Uh, but I, it is my preference. I do kind of like that look. So onto the final part of the video that I'm going to show you here uh, is um, painting some of the back. <laughs> now, uh, some people sometimes are like, oh, you're painting the back of the model. Or, or are you going to paint the back of the model? I actually do paint a lot of the backs of the models, uh, but they're not the most interesting. And especially for this piece, uh, I obviously I had to paint the back of the model because it's being displayed at uh, Games Workshop, so uh, Warhammer World uh, for the uh, the Heresy uh, launch, and um, you know so it's quite important to paint the back. Um, the the thing with the back on this piece is it's just the same as the front and <laughs> it's just painting more non-metallic gold the uh, the shoulder pad what well, the shoulder pads are massive one thing you're going to run into when painting the shoulder pads is you'll paint the front so you know that had the nice big shiny block at the front i'm painting this uh, highlighting at the back and then you've got the spaces in between so looking at it side on um, and things like that in those areas just paint darker highlights so don't go as bright as the you know the bright shiny blob that I'm building up to here but you know just pick out the details and things because of all the nice details actually it is a little bit easier you just paint the edge highlights uh, so you, you know you can leave areas dark but you just pick out all the edges on them um, don't take them up to white because the white you want to save for the the brightest highlight points but kind of like I mean you can see there on the uh, the hip guard that I've done uh, you, you've got like a sort of a brighter area and then I've just basically edge highlighted parts of it and blocked in little color areas and things it's a bit more tricky on the shoulder pad because it is such a large area but that gives you a good kind of idea 
so you've got you know, kind of like so you paint the front and you paint the back. Um, you can't see the back while looking at the front, and you can't see the front while looking at the back. So they can be painted independently. Uh, you can have whatever light source style of painting that you want from the front and then have a completely different one from the back uh, because again they you know you can't see one or the other at the same time uh, the only thing when you, that you can see at the same time is when you see like the side from the front or the back yeah you know so it's like a three-quarter view that's when you kind of like you sort of fudge it uh, and you're painting just random highlights Uh, and so I think you can see a little bit from this angle like I've, I've just kind of like started filling in areas um, the nice thing on this is so it's got the big wing uh, and it's got the highlight at the top that goes a little bit onto the top section with the, the Roman numerals to make 7 for the 7th legion uh, because that's what the imperial fists are you see I do know my heresy <laughs> a lot um, but then it's got the little filigree part at the bottom that's quite in shadow now the temptation will be to leave that kind of the dark so just the, the Mornfang brown sort of uh, airbrushed it part of it but because it's got all that filigree on and you can see kind of like how it catches the light anyway from my lamp that just gives you a good idea of how to you know just pick out those edges and things and it again it adds to the non-metallic look to it uh, what I'm doing here, actually, and this is the main reason that I wanted to show you this this part of the wing, is I'm painting on random highlights again. So I talked about this uh, a bit earlier in terms of like filling the gaps. The the primary highlight is hitting the very top part, so you can see that it's a big opaque block of highlight. But then as it curves round and then the wing curves down, you know, following the shape of the shoulder pad, uh, you could just leave it as like each feather gets a little bit darker each time but that's very boring and it doesn't necessarily help with the non-metallic element but if you start putting in these little kind of reflections that don't go all, go all the way along the feather you know and don't have to be perfect but you know just uh, sort of block them in little horizontal lines again lots of little horizontal lines so it breaks up the edge it's not a hard edge uh, it makes it look like a like shiny reflective surface it's not going to stand up to scrutiny if you get your magnifying glass out uh, but again you, you know if you want to um, spend a long time blending in the uh, transition transitions at the edges you can do that and then it you know you can enter it in the golden demon or whatever it, it would be fine um, and you know be very high standard of painting but you don't need to do that all over remember this <laughs> as I said it's a big model there's a lot of non-metallic metal surface to cover on it and like if you wanted to paint this for the golden demon in this style to get the level of finish that you know that would get a trophy or has a chance of getting a trophy it's going to take you a long time to paint yeah it'd probably take you longer than two weeks to do it i mean i say two weeks when i painted it but it, uh, it wasn't like you know 10 hours a day or anything like that uh, especially because i was recording it at the same time and taking lots of indiv individual photos ready for the pdf as well uh, it's quite a you know it breaks the process up a bit and makes it a bit slower um, so you can see now as I'm sort of you know filling in more and more parts of the shoulder pad uh, and what that this also does is as you fill in these different areas it is making it so that you can rotate the model and it looks metallic from every like from well not necessarily every angle there's always going to be one part where you you know it doesn't quite uh, look as good as the other angles but you can paint non-metallic so that they look good from all the way around uh, you know it's, it's one of the annoyances that I get when people are like oh you know you only look at non-metallics from one angle and you can't see it you know, if you turn it around or you know if you twist it while you're holding it or whatever it looks rubbish it's not true you can paint them to look good from every angle the only thing is that the light reflections don't move uh, I think maybe that's what people mean um, that you know when the light reflections don't move it obviously it doesn't look metallic so you're like oh I can tell it's not metallic uh, but I mean that's obvious like if you look at a painting on the wall because they're all painted in non-metallics um, <laughs> you know they don't move as you walk around them uh, 
it's just that they're a flat surface so people give it a pass whereas this you know you you're looking at for it to be a metallic object um, and when it doesn't it's sort of like it, it breaks the illusion uh, but you know if you just hold it from you know hold it still <laughs> then it's fine <laughs> uh, I mean you know is like I said it's preference if you don't like non-metallics then you know um, you probably haven't got this far in the video. <laughs> um, for the, the highlights here, you can see I'm not highlighting the whole of the feather. Uh, and I'm just pushing towards like the central point. And again, looking like the feathers on the right, they're going to, it's highlighting in towards the left hand side. The feathers on the left, they're highlighting in towards the right hand side. So the light, you know, the light source, the, you know, where the strongest light is, it's ignoring the detail. You're just looking at the big block of highlight. And I can't stress this enough. You have to ignore the detail on the model. Imagine it as a big smooth smooth surface and paint those highlight blocks in. That you know that will then give you an accurate um, sort of light positioning. And then all the other then after afterwards then you just pick out all these little details you know, like the filigree here or you know the edges of the wings and things like that uh, they they're all after effects they they can help enhance non-metallics uh, and indeed they, they do enhance it because you know picking out little edges and things that would naturally catch more light they just you know add to the non-metallic effect but to get the the block of the light source in that's um, you know that's the most important part so you can see here you know uh, it's slowly covering the, the whole shoulder. It is a slow process on this model. There is a lot of metallic, you know, non-metallic to paint on it. Uh, there is one saving grace though. If, like if you find you're getting a little bit bored in this model with painting non-metallics, he does have a big cloak. And because I'm painting in shadows, so if you can look here, so you can see there's a little white tack thing that so I could get keep putting on the cloak just to see where I needed to paint because I was like oh there's a lot to paint on this uh, how much can I cut off put the cloak on and you can see on his right thigh uh, like hamstring area it's a, just a dark area where I've very quickly blocked in where the shadow goes where the the cloak goes over it that means I don't have to then paint that brightly non-metallic and the nice thing is it makes the other parts of the model that are bright look better because you get the high contrast so the shadows help and you don't have to spend a long time painting them now if you're doing this for a competition piece uh, i strongly suggest that you don't just leave it like a dark brown uh, i was a little bit pushed for time on this so i was looking for areas where i could cut corners if you like uh, so the, the sort of the shadow areas i haven't spent as much time on them as i could have if you're doing it for a competition piece Areas in the shadows, they do need to spend. You do need to spend some time on them just to make sure the blends are good. You know, the finish is good, and there's some detail detail there. You can't just paint it dark brown and leave it. There will be bounce reflections. Like it, it, all the reflections work in exactly the same way as the bright highlights here that I'm painting on. Uh, but they're all just a lot darker, so you just don't take the highlights as bright. But like you still get all the bounce highlights and things, and you know. If you just do that all over the model, then you should have something that looks really cool. But um, there you go. There's the uh, the finished model. Uh, as I said, it, it I mean it, it's not perfect. Uh, there are areas where I could have spent more time on it, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, and it, it was a lot of fun to paint. Although you know maybe if it was a smaller Primark, um, it, it could have been done a little bit quicker. Um, but anyway, so that's the end of the video. Uh, there are going to be plenty more heresy videos to come and they're not going to be quite as complicated as this so if you don't like painting the metallics or you just want something that's a, a bit more chill laid back for painting your army there's going to be a lot of that uh, please subscribe if you want more stuff like this or to even even higher level then uh, my website and patreon will be focusing on that that's more for kind of like golden demon display level pieces although i do add uh, army painting pieces on there as well uh, but anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.